Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing section 4.2, just the part 1 here, graphing quadratic functions in vertex form. So a little bit of review, in the last section we had standard form, which looked like ax squared plus bx plus c, and it was important that we saw the x squared, that is what makes it different than a linear equation. As soon as I let a equal 0, I no longer have that x squared, and I actually have something that's going to look like a line. So that was standard form. In this section, in this video, we're going to be talking about vertex form, right? And that's going to be written as y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Now, what you don't see is that x squared explicitly written. However, if I were to look right there at that quantity, x minus h squared, we can actually expand that. We're not necessarily going to have to do that the majority of the time. And if you were to go through the foiling process, you actually end up with an x squared. All right, so that x squared is in there. It's just written differently. Okay, so graphing, all right, the graph of uh, y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k is a parabola. It's still a parabola. It's still a quadratic function. However, it's going to be translated horizontally, so that means it's going to be shifted horizontally h units, and vertically k units. So this is actually going to look something similar to our absolute value function, if you recall. All right, h and k are still going to be my vertex. So my vertex is h comma k. Keep in mind that whatever is on the inside, it's actually going to look opposite. So if it reads x minus 2 squared on the inside, that's actually a positive 2. So that means I would move right 2. All right, and then my axis of symmetry is that h value. All right, um, my vertex is always going to be on my axis of symmetry, and the axis of symmetry always goes through my vertex. So I really just take that x value. And then I am still going to be looking at a here. And a, if it's greater than 0, it opens up. And if it's less than 0, it opens down. Positive up, negative down. So let's look at an example here. Graph a quadratic function from vertex form. All right, so the first thing I actually want to do is label a, h, and k. All right, so a is negative 1 fourth. H even though it reads a plus positive 2, our formula has x minus h. So in order for it to read positive, it needs to be a negative. So h equals negative 2. And k on the outside is a plus 5, so it's a positive 5. And I know that since a is negative, it's going to open down. All right, so I can start out by graphing my vertex. And then what's going to help us is actually putting a dotted line here on my axis of symmetry. All right, so I know any point I put to the right, I can reflect onto the left. Any point I put on the left, I can reflect on the right. All right, so I'm going to plot my vertex and draw my axis of symmetry. And then they give us a couple of points here to plug in. So you can really pick uh, any values. Um, there are a couple of smarter values, I would say, to plug in. However, um, we love to stick with the inputting uh, x equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 if we can, just because they're lower numbers and we like that. So we'll do a t-chart. They choose to input 0, and then they choose to input 2. All right, um, there is a little bit of strategy to that, of uh, why they chose those numbers, why they skipped over 1. And I would say it's because of that number right there, that one fourth. I think they chose two so that when they added, they got four. So that when they multiplied by one fourth, it would actually come out fairly neat. All right, so um, anytime I input zero, that's going to give me a number on my y axis, my y intercept. All right, so um, we do get our, we input zero, we get out four, we input two. And our output is 1, so we have two points to plot there. All right, and then once we plot those points, 
what we're going to do is we're going to kind of count the distance to the axis of symmetry and then we're going to reflect it. All right, so that was two away, so I'm going to reflect two to the left. This is four away, so I'm going to reflect four. All right, and it, then we want to draw a smooth curve. If your curve isn't smooth, if it doesn't look symmetric, then you need to go back and make sure you're using that axis of symmetry properly. All right, here in example two, uh, we're going to talk about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. All right. Um, in class, I'm actually going to play a video for you, uh, which explains one of my common sayings that I say all of the time. All right, so the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington has two towers, and they each rise 307 feet above the roadway. All right, notice it's above the roadway right here. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see when the lines are really small. Um, and they are connected by a suspension cables as shown. Each cable can be modeled by this function. All right, so I do want you to keep in mind it is a positive parabola. All right, we see that A over here is positive, so it opens up, where X and Y are both measured in feet. So uh, what is the distance? We actually want to find the distance between those two. All right, so somehow we're going to be using the 307 in order to find that. So let's break it down. All right, the vertex. What's going to help me is using my equation to find the vertex. So right here, I've got 1400 comma 27. All right, so there's my vertex. And then at the cable's lowest point, it is 1400 feet, 1400 feet right there. All right, so we're going to call that, if we're using right here when I'm bolding in purple, if we're using that as our origin, this is 1,400 feet. So I need to actually refer back to what the question's asking. It's asking for the entire distance. Well, if I know that the vertex is exactly in the middle, all right, it should reflect, it should be right in between those two towers. If it takes me 1,400 feet, from the uh, left tower to the middle, all right, it's gonna also be 1400 feet from the middle of my bridge to the right tower. So this is also gonna be 1400. All right, and using segment addition, which is I'm pretty sure one of the very first sections in geometry, 1400 plus 1400 or 1400 times two is 2800 feet. So the total distance between the two towers is 2,800 feet. All right, so here is the guide to practice. Please graph the following functions. When we go about graphing, it's gonna be very important for us to label it because not all of our lines are gonna be clear where the origin is or anything like that. So make sure to label the vertex. So wherever you put the point, label it blah comma blah, all right, whatever your x is, comma your y, and then your axis of symmetry, we want to go ahead and make sure we label, um, I like writing AOS, x equals whatever that h value is. All right, so go ahead and graph it, pause the video to see the solution. All right, guide to practice two. And then here in Guide to Practice 4, what if? Suppose an architect designs a bridge with cables that can be modeled by this function. All right, so slightly different than that Tacoma Narrows example. All right, X and Y are still measured in feet. Compare this function, this function's graph, to the graph of the function in example 2. So what exactly is going to be different? All right, and we have a couple things to look at. Where's the vertex? Uh, what is the axis of symmetry? Is it a little bit more narrow? Is it wider? Um, is it shifted up or shifted to the left? All right, you've got lots of things that you can point out here. So go ahead and get this graph. Um, if you have a graphing calculator or if you wanna visit desmos.com, which you're not gonna be able to actually use on your test, all right, or GeoGebra, GeoGebra, 
dot com. And if you backslash uh, classic, um, that'll be the easiest mode there. All right, you can graph both of these functions and compare them. All right, so the answer to this is the graph is slightly steeper. All right, that means it's going to be a little bit more narrow. Um, they both have the same vertex and the same axis of symmetry, and they both open up. The difference right here is that a value. So in the numerator, they both have ones. However, I believe in the original example it was 7,000 something. All right, so um, the difference is I'm dividing by a smaller number, which means this is actually going to be bigger. All right, since I'm dividing by a smaller number, the entire number itself is going to be larger. Um, so that means it's actually going to be a little bit more of a vertical stretch. So it is going to be steeper and more narrow. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Um, if not, good luck and God bless.